Good morning! My name is Robin and welcome back to Happy at Home. Today I'm going to finally get around to answering the questions that you so graciously left for me in the comments on my video last week. So now I'm like a little nervous that I'm not going to be able to answer your questions. <laughs> Let's jump right in. Okay, so I have quite a few questions. Thank you very much for leaving questions for me. I was a little worried at first that nobody would have like any questions for me. So I was a little, I was terrified to tell you the truth. Strictly speaking, just terrified. But that's all right. You guys were fantastic and left me quite a few questions. So yeah, let's. So the first question is, what is your favorite room in your house and why? This is a hard question for me because I have so many rooms in my house that I actually like. My favorite place to be would be in my bedroom because my bed is so comfy and I love that room so much right now with the, I just newly decorated it and it's just, it's bright and cheerful and colorful and I just love it so very much. But as a mom, I don't feel like I should just go to my room and hang out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I should be out in the main areas of the house accessible to the kids who need things so yeah it would be my first preference would be my bedroom but mostly I hang out in my living room which is another room that I just decorated for spring and I love it too and the couch that I have in there is really comfortable also so if I'm having downtime at all most likely I will be on the couch in the living room and if it's dark out, I'll have all the lights off and I will have candles going, which is normally what I do when the kids go to bed every night for about an hour or so. I'll sit on the couch, with all the lights off, just candles on, and we'll read a book on my Kindle or I'll watch something on Netflix. So that's what I like to do in that room. And then the next question is, where does your inspiration to decorate come from? Whew. This is a tricky one too. These are supposed to be easy questions, people. All right, um, a lot of times my inspiration for a room will come from either something I picked up at the store or something that I have on hand that I have and I know I wanna use for a particular season. Also, obviously the season plays a lot into what I'm going to do in a room. Um, like when I just recently redid my bedroom, I found some monkey grass at Hobby Lobby and I was obsessed with it so I knew I wanted to use that so you starting with that monkey grass I kind of you know put the room together around that making sure that I could use that in the room and then I just kind of built on that using different colors that would go with the green of the monkey grass so most of the time that's where my inspiration comes from something specific that I want to use um, is normally my starting point if I am really stuck, Instagram lately has been my go-to. I'll just start scrolling through my Instagram feed and before long I'll have some sort of idea or I'll see a photo or I'll see something that I already have and I'm like, oh, I could use that. And then that'll kind of start the creative juices in my head and we'll start, I'll start brainstorming and that's what I'll, how I'll come up with something. If that doesn't work, a lot of times I will go start scrolling through my blog feeds and stuff like that. But most of the time, Instagram, if I am really struggling, that is the way to go for me lately. So, hopefully that answers that question. Alright, so the next question is, what is your favorite thrift store? I have a couple that are in town. My favorite one by far, though, is called Unique, which is also like a Savers, I believe. But in my town, it's called Unique. And that's a pretty big store. The prices are pretty well, pretty good still. I mean, they've kind of getting higher um, over the last year or so, I've noticed. But yeah, I normally have really good luck there. Another place that I go to is Goodwill. I don't normally buy a lot at Goodwill, but I do find things on and off there. But I always think that their prices are really high. So I don't know if it's just my area, but like compared to the other thrift store that I go to, their prices are much higher. The next question is, what is your favorite color? <laughs> By far, my favorite color my whole entire life has been red. A bright, cheerful, cherry red. I love it so, so much. It has always been my favorite. I love to wear red. I love to be surrounded by red. It is like my go-to color. And I use a lot of red in the wintertime in my, in my house. 
um, because red and white, oh, I just love red and white together. It is so invigorating to me. It just is like the perfect color combo and I can't get enough of it. I love it all year round. I love it for the July. I love it for Christmas. I like it. I love it all the time. The red and white combo. Oh my goodness. It's like the best. It really any color with white though is like ooh, my, you know, I'm a very, <laughs> I'm very simple in my tastes, I think. Anything, like I love white with black, I love white with blue, I love white with green, I like it with pink. It just, I don't know, it just, my unifying color is white, if you have seen my house at all. <laughs> all right, so the next question is, what is your favorite thing to do in your cottage? I really, if I, I'm assuming this is asking me what I like to do in my downtime. I like to decorate. I love changing things around, but I will say that I do like change things around and then I kind of just leave it that way for a little bit and then I like, I don't just like change little displays, I like change the whole room. Do you know what I mean? I know some people like just like change little displays here and that every now and then, but I like to like clean slate, just clean, change everything. So really I only do that probably four times a year. Well sometimes I decorate in the summer for like 4th of July, so I guess that's like five times a year. But anyways, I don't know, major redecorating happens four or five times in a year, and then in between I'll do a little bit here and there, but yeah, mostly it's like whole room changes. And if I am not decorating, I love to watch Netflix, and I love to watch shows on Amazon Prime, and that's just my downtime. I love it so much, and of course I love watching YouTube videos. I watch them constantly throughout the day, like whenever I've got like five minutes, like, oh, I need a little break, I'll watch another video. You know what I mean? Or I'll be washing the dishes and I'll watch some videos. So I love, I love you watching YouTube videos also. All right, so other things that I like to do, I like to garden. I have a pretty good sized garden and I like to sew and I like to do crafting. And of course, I love hanging out with my husband and my girls, um, which is getting harder and harder to do with my girls getting older. They like, you know, developing their own lives and friends and activities and all that kind of stuff so it's always awesome when I can connect with my girls so yeah so the next question is I really like your quilting videos you've made who taught you <laughs> my mom is an amazing seamstress and I remember her teaching me how to sew um, a skirt I was probably 10 12 maybe a little younger I can't remember exactly but yeah she I picked up the skirt pattern I picked up the fabric and then she taught me how to you know find the right pieces how to lay it on in the fabric how to follow the pattern and so so I've always kind of had from the help of my mom the knowledge of sewing and how to follow a pattern um, but I mostly it was from watching her so she is when I was younger and growing up she was always sewing something that was like her downtime was to sit at the sewing machine and to sew and she would make my sister and my brother and I clothes all the time I know for Easter and for Christmas we would always have a new outfit like my sister and I would always have a new dress my brother would have like a new bow tie or like a vest or something like that and it was every single year she would make us new outfits and herself a new outfit and yeah, and she was always sewing, and so I just kind of learned from watching her a lot. And then I really didn't do much with it other than I think I had a home ec class where we made like a pillow or something like that. I can't remember. But I know I remember sewing in that class. And then when I was married, my mom and dad gave me a sewing machine as a wedding gift. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So then I, of course, started making like pillow covers and like... Um, what else did I make? Like curtains and that sort of thing. And I started to develop a better technique for sewing and stuff like that. And that's kind of where it took off from there. Um, nowadays, I do a lot of um, just home decor sewing and quilts. I love sewing quilts. Um, nowadays, when I want to make a quilt that I don't know, like a certain pattern, like Ohio Star was my last one that I made that was from a pattern. I just found it online on YouTube and I found a wonderful tutorial on how to make it and I had so much fun. I love quilts that need piecing together 
it's a lot of work, but I enjoy it a lot. Um, I really want to get myself to the point where I can make a log cabin quilt, and then there's like a starburst quilt that I want to make too, but one of these days I will get to that. So, yeah. So that is how I learned to sew. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> All right, so the next question, um, oh, the next question is from my sweet mother-in-law. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Hope you're doing great. Hope you're watching, and say hi to Jake. So, she is asking me, how did you decide to take that first step for your own channel? This is kind of a long, complicated question. Years ago, I started blogging. I found the world of blogs, and I was, like, intrigued, and then shortly after, I started my own blog. So, I've been blogging for quite a few years, on and off, you know, it has been, you know, as I was able to do something or share, make a project and share it, I would post it on there. And that was a great opportunity for me to, you know, share the things that I was working on. And I really loved it. I loved blogging so very much. And I used to do a lot of tutorials on there. And I got to the point where doing tutorials with taking photos was getting very cumbersome and tedious because you'd have to stop, take a picture, stop, take a picture of each little single step. So then I'm like, you know what, maybe I should try vi doing a video of the tutorial. This is after I had started watching a few videos, tutorials on YouTube. I'm like, I could totally do that, so I'm going to try it. So then I started adding the video tutorials onto my blog along with all the pictures and stuff like that and I was really enjoying it so then I'm like oh, you know what maybe I should try vlogging because my girls are getting older and I had gone through um, my pictures for the previous year because I was going to do a scrapbook and I'm like I have like three pictures of one of my girls because she doesn't like to be photographed like this is not right so I was like alright I'm going to start you know doing a few little videos here and there just so I have something to you know to remember this age that they're at so um, so I started taking my camera with me when we would go like camping and stuff and I'd start doing a little vlog here and there and then that kind of turned into something else because I really enjoyed that and I was having so much fun with it so then I started adding just vlog onto my YouTube channel so that's when I kind of started the channel itself because I wanted to be able to put the vlog up so that my girls could watch it and the grandparents could watch it so that's kind of how my channel started and then I was enjoying the vlogging so much that I'm like you know what maybe I'll start doing a few little home decor you know things when I decorate or when I do a project or something like that I'll start putting that on and that from there that is how my channel kind of got started so I still blog and I have my YouTube channel so yeah and then um, my Instagram and all that kind of stuff too but it's all kind of connected you know so I just I'm having a blast with it. It is so much fun. I'm so glad I decided to just start it, start the channel, and to start putting stuff up. And it's kind of it's grown, and I am having a blast with it. So that is how my channel started. So kind of yeah. Hopefully <laughs> that answers your question, Cindy. <laughs> what inspires you, and how do you come up with design ideas for your home decor? We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier in that the seasons really make a big difference on what I'm going to do. Because obviously in the summer I like lighter and brighter and a lot of softer colors, that sort of thing. And in the winter time I like the rooms to feel more cozy and you know lots of layers and that sort of thing. So that is, I think my seasons is my biggest deciding factor for any of my home decor. And then from there it's you know items that I like or a color that I want to use or something like that is my jumping off point um, for before I start the for before I start the room decorating process you know a lot of things kind of stay the same in a room and I'll just add a few extra things or sometimes I'll change up the whole room completely um, and then also, I know that I'm the style that I like is pretty simple and it's not maybe not so much minimalistic, but it's very simple. It's not a lot of stuff, it's very streamlined. So, I know in my mind that I want to keep things calm and simplified in my decor and not to add a whole lot of stuff. So, that kind of keeps me in check 
when I'm like adding things to a room and stuff, I'm like, oh, this is getting to be too cluttered looking for my taste. I'll take stuff away from that situation. And I normally I like it a lot better. So that's a personal preference for myself that I've learned over the years that I like a more minimalistic sort of situation in my decorating and a lot of people don't like that they like a lot of different layers and things going on and for me that's just too it's too much and it's too cluttering and it it makes my head hurt <laughs> so anyways so yeah I mean a lot of that is is um so either an item the season and then also like just the inspiration of going through like Facebook not Facebook <laughs> and then also like I've mentioned before, the Instagram, my Instagram feed, there's so much inspiration on Instagram, on Pinterest, on blogs, that sort of thing. All right, so yeah, so basically it's a season, it's a color, it's a thing I want to use. Or if I am you know, need inspiration, I'll go to Instagram, Pinterest, or blogs that I watch for inspiration to get me started. And then normally I just take it from there, from what I have in my stash of decorating supplies. I normally don't go out and buy new things specifically for a room. I will make things specifically for a room like, oh, I'd like a new pillow cover. So I'll go out and make a pillow cover for a pillow I already have. So I don't have to buy a new pillow. I just need to buy some fabric or use some fabric that I already have. So yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. All right, so the next question is, what brings you joy and what do you look forward to most when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> So the first part of the question, what brings you joy? I would have to say hands down, my family. My girls are a great sense of joy to me and so is my husband. Just having time together with them, just it seems like time with them is fleeting a lot of the time because my kids are getting older and it's harder to work in, you know, just time to hang out with them. Either time for me or for them because now they're all getting older they're you know having their own things that they want to do and then hanging out with mom isn't so cool anymore you know how that goes so i've hit that stage <laughs> and then you know hanging out with my husband is a lot of times very difficult also because he works a lot of long hours so we see each other sporadically through the day and that is those are the best parts of my day is hanging out with the kids and with my husband so and then what do you look forward to most when you wake up in the morning not gonna lie, it's nap time. I love naps. <laughs> I don't get a nap every single day. I try to not let myself have a nap every day. I try to do a nap like every other day possibly, if I can work it in. Like most times, I don't get to work in a nap, but if I can work in a nap, I'm totally having a nap because I get up every morning about 4.35 o'clock. Without a doubt, I am awake, like wide awake, instantly and I do a lot of my work in the morning up to about lunchtime I'll have lunch and then I'll have a little bit of downtime and before you know it it's like 2 30 and the kids are coming home from school and then the craziness starts again so um, if I can get a nap in yeah that makes my day so much better <laughs> ah, all right and then the next question is what state do you live in I'm currently living in Minnesota. We have lived here for basically my whole married life. We moved up here right before we got married. And so it's been almost 20 years I've lived here in Minnesota. I grew up in Wisconsin and it's seriously, I am I am less than an hour away from where I grew up when I was little. <laughs> so I haven't gone far, but I am in a different state. So. The next question is, who inspires you, inspired you to make these types of videos? Oh boy. There are so many YouTubers that I watch that it's really hard to name a few. Um, one of the very first people that I started watching was How Jen Does It. I watched her videos and then shortly after that I found Shelly's Home Life which is kind of a newer channel to me also. So I started watching them and then from there I've gone on, those are like mommy channels or cleaning channels, that sort of thing. Um, but now I have a whole bunch of ones that I watch and some of my favorites are um, Border Bananas, Sweetly Home, um, the Perry Family Vlog, oh, what else? 
Oh, Mama from the Mama from Scratch. Is that it? Yeah. There's just so many that I that I need to find that I I can't I can't name them all. But those la those ladies all are very inspiring to me. And then, yeah, I'm trying. I'm always constantly on the lookout for more decorating because that's where my heart lies. Not so much in the cleaning part, you know, of mommy or lifestyle blogs. So I'm always on the constantly looking for decorating <laughs> channels. So if you have any suggestions for me, leave them in the comments below because I'm really new to like watching YouTube videos. When I absolutely first started watching YouTube videos on a regular basis, that was probably about a year ago, it was all makeup videos, you know, makeup stuff and like hair tutorials and I've kind of moved away from that to more of the mommies and like home decor so I'm really actually quite new to the mommy lifestyle home decor YouTube watching so I I still haven't I still like almost every day I come across another channel that I had no clue was out there and I'm like oh this is amazing so yeah I'm very new to it. I think really I've only in the last six months have I really started subscribing to a lot of people. So yeah, I'm pretty new to it, to tell you the truth. So because before it was all it was all like, you know, makeup stuff or and or an occasional like crafting video or something like that. But yeah, I'm pretty new to the whole whole to the whole thing. So all right, so the next question is, are you going to do anything outside? And yes, I have a garden in my front yard and I have a garden in my backyard. Um, I have a small like gravel patio in my backyard and I'd like to give that a little makeover this year. And also we've got like this on this one side of the gravel patio. I want to, it's like a little sloped incline that is underneath our sun porch. And I'd like to dig that out, level that off and make that part of the patio space so yeah and I want to build an arbor for my garden this year I've been wanting to do that for years so I'm hoping to do something like that yeah there's a lot of things that I want to do outside so I'm getting excited that it's time to get out there and start doing stuff like this earlier this week I actually got out and worked in my front yard so my front yard garden is ready to go Except for I still need to trim some shrubs and I need to lay new mulch. But other than that, it's pretty much ready to go and I haven't touched the backyard yet. Which is pretty crazy because it's getting it to be really close to May. And our planting time is normally May 12th in the zone that I'm in. So, yeah. But I don't really think I'm going to do any vegetable gardens this year. I may plant a few cucumbers and that'll probably be it. Well, maybe some pumpkins too because I like the little itty bitty baby pumpkins. To use in the fall so a lot of times we'll grow some pumpkins so that I have them for decor purposes <laughs> isn't that terrible <laughs> so yeah but I have been I have found the last couple of years that my gardening time has diminished greatly and I want to start redoing my garden completely so and bring in get rid of a lot of the flowers and bring in more of like um, flowering shrubs hydrangeas that sort of thing and like everbites and some boxwoods and make it much more um, low maintenance garden because I don't have a lot of time to spend in the garden like I used to as the kids get older I have less and less time because I used to go out when the kids were little and which is when I put in the flower garden when they were little they'd be out there playing and I'm like what am I gonna do with myself so I started you know gardening a lot and you know I'd be pulling weeds and they'd be playing or I'd be picking vegetables or flowers and they'd be playing or they'd be helping me and it's a fun little thing that we did together but now the kids are older they want nothing to do with my garden and I have found that it's very hard to find time to be out there although Shelby girl loves it when I go out in the garden because <laughs> then she loves being outside when it's nice and sunny so yeah so yeah I do have some plans for some outside spaces but not a whole lot to tell you the truth but yeah definitely we'll do a few things outside for sure this summer so the next question is what do you use to make your videos so beautifully bright and fresh most of the time I try to use natural sunlight that comes in my front of my house faces east and I have a big window in my kitchen and a big window above my stairs so that lets a lot of light into the house and then the back of my house faces west 
and I've got some nice big windows in those two rooms also in my dining room and my living room so that lets in a lot of light so I'm blessed with that to begin with um, so most of the time I try to do a lot of my filming on a day where it's nice and sunny and I have a lot of natural light in the room to begin with to film most of my decorating videos I use my Canon I have a Rebel T3i which I've had for years and it seems to do a pretty good job um, and if it's um, if it's a little more gloomy and I don't have as much sunlight as I would like or it's not as bright as I would like I will bump up the exposure a little bit to like in between one and two and that will give the room a lot more light if that doesn't work when I'm taking video um, I will get out the Christmas gift my husband gave me he bought me two soft box lights so I'll get those up and I'll shine them up at the ceiling and it kind of makes the room a lot brighter overall without giving it too much of a shadow so that is what I will do if I really need to film and the room is not bright enough for me to film in um, so yeah that's for video if I am taking photos I also use the Canon um, I will bump up the um, exposure rate the, I either the, I'll either change the AV setting or I will change the ISO setting to whatever works best at that particular moment and very rarely do I need to use the soft lights for taking photos just bumping up one of the two will normally do the trick for me um, so yeah that is normally how I get the looks in my room with those two cameras if I'm vlogging I have a different vlogging camera and that's a vlog what is it it's also a Canon it's an SX 610 yeah that's what it is and I'll use that to do my vlogging most of the time in combination with my phone like if I'm out and about I use my phone but if I'm home I'll use that camera for my vlogging camera and that one normally does a pretty good job of staying pretty bright in the house even on gloomy days if it's too gloomy then I'll turn on the overhead lights and sometimes if that will make the overhead lights will make it a little yellowy looking if that's the case then I try to stand near a window even though it's not sunlight even just a little bit of light from the you know gloominess outside is better than overhead lighting I don't know I don't know if that helps at all but that is what I what I have learned to do to make my videos a little brighter because I like nice bright if you notice I love brightness so yeah all right so the very final question that I have to share today is where did you develop your sense of style <laughs> this is kind of a hard question to answer let me start with saying I've always been drawn to the cottage country or like Nordic style of rooms back in the day when I used to look at magazines all the time I was a country living country home those are my favorites and then I discovered blogs and I was obsessed with like Swedish designers and you know Swedish bloggers and stuff like that because the rooms were always so light filled and they were very simple decor and I just love that so very much so from the love of those three types of styles is kind of how I've developed my personal style I like to make sure that my rooms are filled with light there's not a lot of dark colors in it because dark to me darker colors or even just a lot of wood tones is very oppressive to me I like it to be bright and open um, and I like my decor to be not really minimalistic but very simple like two or three three to five things kind of grouped together not like a whole mass of things and this is all because you know and it all is trial and error like I can remember when we first moved into this house I was trying to get the Martha Stewart mossy green color on my walls that was super popular then and I ended up with this dark green like Green Bay Packer green on my walls because it kept every time I put a paint color up it was too minty so I would try to go a little darker and it ended up being like this dark forest green 
and I was just so fed up with it that I just left it like that for like two years and I hated it but it was wall color and it wasn't beige you know what I mean so because when we moved into the house everything was beige so yeah so I have kind of developed a style of, that I like and it's taken a long time especially like collecting all the things that I like to be surrounded with has taken a long time and I do that through going to like flea markets and um, thrift stores and just stores in general but most of my stuff is most of my stuff in my house has been found secondhand either at thrift stores or at flea markets um, but how I developed my style I will tell you this I remember being so frustrated with not knowing how to decorate my home and I see I open up these magazines and I see these beautiful gorgeous rooms and I'm like why can't I make a room like that you know what I mean I was so frustrated so what I decided to do was grab my stack of magazines and I started going through each and every page and every time I found something that I like I ripped that page out of the magazine and put it in a pile so then once I'd gone through the magazine a couple times and it's all ripped up and I had my pile of pictures that I liked I went through that pile of pictures and I circled everything on the page that I liked whether it was the color on the wall whether it was a doorknob or a light fixture or a pillow or just um, a floral display anything in that room that I liked sometimes I had those pictures all circled up that you could barely see what was in them anymore but that's how I went through that stack and I put a circle around everything so then once I had everything circled and I knew exactly what I wanted in each and every that I liked in each photo I could see a pattern beginning to emerge you know like I liked painted furniture I liked very light toned wood I liked walls that were pale um, and not really deeply saturated I liked rooms that had minimal colors with pops of colors of brighter colors like a whiter background or a creamy background with pops of brilliant bright colors um, I found that I liked a lot of ironstone I liked you know rough textures against clean slick textures of like glass and that sort of thing so it really helped me going through and doing that exercise of figuring out what I liked in those photos specifically really helped me decide what I wanted to bring into my home so then when I went out to the thrift stores and I went out to the flea markets I knew what I was looking for when I wanted to redo a room I knew I wanted to start with a wall color that was a lighter toned color you know either whether it be white or gray or whatever but I knew I wanted it to be a soft pale color so that I could add color and texture and layers with different items instead of having the wall be the focal point I wanted the things to be in the room to be the focal point hopefully that makes sense <laughs> So anyways, so that is how I developed the style that I have now currently. And then, you know, from there, it's just trial and error. You know, you've got a bare shelf that you need to, that you need to decorate. Find something in your stash of decor items that you absolutely love and start from there. Start filling it in from that one item that you like. And most of the time, that's what I do. Um... So yeah, so you can, you know, you'll find out very quickly if you like things symmetrical or if you like things asymmetrical. Um, I typically like to have things very symmetrical and not a whole lot of things, but a lot of people like asymmetrical and like to group a lot of different things together. But I like wide open spaces in my decor and some people don't. So you just it's a personal preference it's thing, something that develops over time and I still think that my de, my decor pre preferences are still changing they're always going to change it's just like a house or a garden it's constantly evolving just like we ourselves are constantly evolving our homes are, are a reflection of ourselves so I think that we're always going to be trying new things and trying to improve certain areas of our homes just like we do 
with ourselves. So anyways, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> That might have been a really rambly, long answer, Then you're and you're like totally confused at this point. Yeah, sometimes I'm not the best at explaining myself. But anyways, so there you go. That, I believe, is the end of the questions. Yes, it is. So, I think this is going to end up turning out to be a really long video. I apologize. I will try to get it as short and concise as possible, but apparently I am feeling very chatty today. <laughs> so... So again, thank you for anyone who left um, a question. I really appreciate it. It was very sweet of you, and it, this was kind of fun. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any comments, like you need me to clarify anything from what I've said today, just leave it in the comments, and I'll make sure that I answer your questions. So thanks again for watching today. I appreciate you taking the time to stop by today, and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye now.